or similar to this one, America is Black, um, and recognize the artwork of Tatiana Fazla Lizade, who is an artist I had known when I was in New York for her posters, her wheat paste posters that you could find on the streets of Brooklyn um, that said, Stop Telling Women to Smile. So this was the first campaign that she became really famous for, um, and uh, for not only um, the artwork, which depicted women, um, but also the text underneath, which was their voices. Um, so when I saw this um, and was really moved by the message and discovered that Tatiana was from Oklahoma City, I decided that we needed to bring her to Oklahoma Contemporary, which she agreed to do. Um, and uh, she decided to focus specifically on the neighborhood where she grew up in Northeast Oklahoma City and uh, do portraits of those people and amplify their voices. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Tatiana, who can talk a little bit more about the artworks we have here in the gallery um, and answer questions that you have. Go for it. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, that was uh, a great introduction to how I got to be here in this space. Um, I will walk you through the show. I guess we'll start here. Um, should we start maybe in the survey gallery with the video? Or I think we're going to have to skip the video just because the sound quality is okay. cut. Okay, cool. Um, well, check out the survey gallery at some point. It's great. Um, so we start here with America is Black because it is sort of the introduction to what brought me here into this space. Um, I did the piece in 2016 after the election, came home to Oklahoma that November and was, like a lot of people, really um, upset and angry and wanted to do something using my artwork that was a response to what had just happened. Um, and that's how that piece was born. Um, from that piece, I have traveled to different cities across the country doing sort of iterations of that. Um, for Seattle is Black, for example, talking to black and brown people in different cities about what their lives are like. Um, particularly now in the political climate that we're in, talking to people who are very vulnerable um, and just asking them what they want to say back to the public about what they are experiencing right now. Um, so I was having that in mind when I was invited to come here to Oklahoma City, uh, to come back to Oklahoma City and do this show. Thinking about this work, thinking about what I wanted to say about my own black experience growing up here, thinking about how I could amplify the stories of other black folks who live here, um, people that I know, people that I don't know, friends, family, and also people that I don't know, people from my community. Um, and so I started to start to piece together what this show would become. Um, it's very important for me to talk to people, to interview them, to hear their experiences, um, and then create artwork that is reflecting them. So we can sort of uh, start moving, yeah? Um, all right, we'll go this way first and do this whole first group. Um, so this piece here is called Remember Black Motherhood, and it is a portrait of my mother um, that is also using a, um, a piece from the Black Dispatch. Um, so this is my way that you'll see throughout the show where we have the sort of historical photos that are combined and composed with these recent and current images of people. Um, that is sort of for me doing both of telling the story of people who um, are here now, who are alive and well and are doing great, and people who um, from our past. So just putting the present with the history. Um, this piece here is of my aunt, uh, my aunt Viola. Um, I love this corner here because it sort of gives you a great introduction to what the show is going to be. You have these large scale drawing we paste and then you also have paintings and you also have the historical images. Um, so we're seeing a lot of portraiture of people who I know, of people who I've met specifically interviewed for this show. Um, and we are placing them with um, these historical images to sort of do the present and the past together. Um, and it also sort of gives you a great sense of my work as an artist. Um, I've always been an oil painter. I started out as an oil painter and over the past few years have ventured out into doing these really large scale we paste outside in the street. Um, for that, I'm bringing that into this show. So I love that because it's bringing scale into this show. It's bringing, uh, making use of these really great tall walls. This show is very much so site specific. I had to be here in this space to think about how big something should be, where something should go. Um, it took me a long time to put this show together because I was just figuring out, should this go here, should this go here? Um, ultimately, everything works together as a whole. 
it's not just paintings placed on the wall, but it's more of an installation. I'm using the walls and the space um, really very specifically to the work. Can, can I just ask you, um, maybe you can explain what weak paste is for people who don't know. Like, so you're sure. not drawing on the wall directly. Right, I'm not drawing on the wall directly. We paste is a type of glue, it's a type of adhesive. So um, it, it, it's really just paper glued onto the wall, it's like a wallpaper glue. Um, and when I work outdoors, that's the work, that's the medium that I use outdoors. So it's easy to just go outside, take a piece of paper, glue it onto the wall, and it's there. Um, you can see some of this in the work also here, which I really love, some of those sort of imperfections, like some wrinkles in the paper, some of the glue dripping down. When it's outside, you don't notice that at all because it's outside. But I love having that texture here in the gallery as well. Um, so this drawing that I did is small. It's about 8 by 10 inches. Um, I scan it, I blow them up really big, high quality, and place them onto the wall. Um, and obviously it creates an entirely different experience from something that's this small to something that's this big. Um, if we turn around, you will see my, this is part of the artist statement, but for me this piece also works alone as an art piece itself. I think of this as a text art piece. So for me this is just as much so an art piece as one of the paintings on the wall. Um, and this really gives an introduction to the lens that I'm coming from with this entire show. Um, this show is very personal for me. It, is, it features a lot of my family, a lot of my friends. Um, the show is about my particular experience of blackness in Oklahoma City. It's not everyone's experience. Black people aren't a monolith. I'm not trying to do that. The show isn't a historical show. I'm not talking specifically about the sit-ins or things like that. It's mentioned here, of course, but that's not specifically what the show is about. It's coming from me as a 33-year-old black woman who grew up on the east side. What my experience is, what I love about black people, what I love about my family, what I love about the east side, what I love about growing up here, and really just trying to put that into this show. Um, so ultimately, I think this show is talking about black Oklahomans, but coming at it from me as a person, who I am, Tatiana, the things that I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about women, I'm passionate about um, social justice, I'm passionate, passionate about those things. And so you get that particular sort of lens in this show. Um, and so it's very personal. And I think this, opening up with this, so big and so huge on the wall, um, just makes that very clear, I think. So when you read this, you'll see that it's something that I wrote. Someone else who's black and grew up in Oklahoma could probably write something very different, right? But this is coming from me. Um, so it's a great just sort of like amplifier about my voice into this show. Um, over here we have a photo um, that I sourced from Oklahoma Historical Society. Um, and it, it just creates context to the show as well. Um, but, there's a ton of images online about you know history of black people in Oklahoma, and I could have chosen any of them. I chose this one specifically because it's more in line with the time frame that I'm thinking about, 93, 94. Um, it's talking about Douglas High School, um, which is right down the street from where I grew up. Um, and it's a black boy, just being a black boy going to school. Um, what I love about this show, what I try to do here, is really just represent regular, everyday black people, not these well-known figures, or not people that you grew up learning about, or um, things that you may already know, but just regular, everyday black folk. Um, I think that that is worth celebrating. I think that that is worth making huge on a wall like this, um, just the boy coming out of his, his ID card for school. Um, So on this wall we have a portrait of my stepsister Kelly. Um, this is an oil painting. I, I talked to Kelly um, in her house on her couch, interview style, like I did with most of the people that are featured here. Um, for most of the folks that are featured in this show, we did an interview. My friend and collaborator Melinda James, who's hiding her back, who did the videos. Um, she uh, recorded the videos for me. So when we get to the living room section, you'll see the um, video interviews that we did. So this is the process. You know, sit down with someone, talk to them, ask them very plainly, 
who are you? What are your experiences? What do you have to say about being black, about being a woman, about these other identities that you may hold? What do you have to say about that, particularly in the context of Oklahoma and Oklahoma City? Um, those are the questions. We talk, I report the conversation, I shoot their photograph, and from there I do either drawing or painting. In Kelly's case, I did a painting. Um, here, the words here are Kelly's words. So this is what Kelly had to say. We had a long conversation, but at the end, I felt like this was the most important thing that I wanted to represent in this show. Um, she was very passionate about what she had to say about police, about violence against black people here in Oklahoma. Um, and she was one of the only people who really spoke very plainly and clearly about that. So I wanted to make sure that I put that in the show and put it up very big and very boldly. Again, we have the historical image that's showing that, you know, I'm sure these black folks were experiencing violence just like Kelly is. And so putting these two together, we have this very contemporary portrait of her <clears throat> right next to this old black and white photo of her with the words that are speaking very clearly to both of these generations. <clears throat> Behind us, again, using historical reference, historical image, um, this is Ashley, same process, went to Ashley's house, she invited me into her home, we sat down on her couch when I got there. She was, um, she was with her baby, the newborn baby, my baby was about a month old or so, um, and we had a very open and honest conversation. And I asked her again, who are you? What do you experience? And what do you want to say to the public about your experiences? I usually end each interview that I do asking them, okay, and so what would you want to say to the public? The public can be the city, this country, your neighborhood. What do you want to assert about who you are, about what you go through to anybody, to the public? And it ended sort of with what we see here on the wall. She said, when black women speak up, believe them. When we use our voices, believe us. We are not the same in the world, all the moms are our back. I think lots of times black women are looked at to vote us out of issues or to be the backbone of families, and we just want to be normal women. Um, and I thought that that was very poignant, and so we put that on the wall. Um, I think that that quote, for me, when I was choosing an image to pair with her drawing, um, matched very well with this headline. Um, the full headline reads, Police and Now Treats Woman. Um, and on the story here, it's a very <clears throat> scripted story about how a black woman was um, um, beat up by, by a man, a policeman in particular. But I wanted to just really focus on the man, not just woman, because um, I think it was speaking a lot to what Ashley was talking about. Um, here again, put this show together, thinking about where to install things, where to put things. I wanted to pair an oil painting right next to this beautiful black and white photo, add some color. Most of the show is black and white. Um, I love the aesthetic of black and white, I love the scale of the black and white drawings, but I wanted to add these paintings kind of spread throughout the show so that you do get these really beautiful lush color um, paintings coming through as well. Um, this painting is from a, to do the painting I referenced a photo, um, I think from the 80s, of my brother um, and a friend of his. So this young black boy, um, two black boys playing with um, their toys, showing their toys. Um, I love the photo and I wanted to paint it. Um, there's a, sorry, I have a question for you. Um, so I feel like these are really ephemeral, that we pay SAR to a certain degree because they're gonna basically be destroyed when we take them down. And these are more permanent. Do you have a different sense of doing different kinds of art and more permanent and that, or um, is that not present when you're creating them? Are they? Yeah, I'm thinking about that. Um, oil paintings are, when, I, when I'm choosing who to paint or who to portray, in what way to portray them, I am thinking about should it be an oil painting, should it be a drawing. Um, I think the, the medium does also speak to the, the person that I'm showing and the things that I'm trying to say as well. Um, I mean, for this piece, for this painting, it's, it's, this is my brother, and I, and I was trying to, uh, trying to portray boyhood, black boyhood, in a way that I think um, I don't often see in something that I wanted to see. Um, and I thought that it would work well as an oil painting versus um, a drawing. 
Also, a lot of the paintings that you see that I do when I'm choosing to do paintings are paintings that are more involved. You know, Kelly has a couch, she's sitting on something. Um, I love the composition of that. And it's something that I think just works well as a painting, better than it would work well as a drawing that I put on the wall. They're also your family, I noticed. Yeah. 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 That's something too, for sure. <laughs> they get the paintings. <laughs> process, um, contemporary black folks that I met here in Oklahoma, these are people that I did not know before, again, just like Ashley, um, that I met here last November. To do this show, I had to come back a couple of times before I actually created the work. I needed to gather the content, I needed to talk to people, get the interviews, so we held a couple of events where I met with a bunch of people, and then I also had these individual um, interviews and meetings with people. Um, this was someone that invited me to her home. We had a conversation. This is someone that I just met during my traveling around the city and, and just gathering content. I went to Adam's Barbershop, took a bunch of photos in there. This is someone that was sitting in Adam's Barbershop. I thought he looked dope just sitting there, took his photo, and wanted to put these two together. Um, when I was thinking about which image to pair them with, I really love this photo that I found online. Um, since Progressive Citizen is a great photo for and I just, I, it's something about the way that he looks. He's obviously a very contemporary guy, contemporary person. Um, he's next to me, he's um, very distinguished um, um, images of black folks from this time period. Um, same thing with her, very contemporary looking person. Um, the quotes that you see on the wall um, are placed in ways that I think make sense for the way that you're experiencing the show. So if you are standing back from this, you want to stand back from it. But in order to read this poem, it puts you into this wall. You have to come up and read this poem. This brings you closer to this drawing. Um, this quote says, I'm proud of the black culture in Oklahoma, especially in a state where they tried to completely burn us down. And as far as being queer, I think there's something beautiful about that. Black people and people who identify as LGBTQ, both of those groups are people who are peace and silence. And I'm happy to be a part of both of them. Um, representing a different population of black folks. Um, again, thinking about black people and how black people are different, the intersections of identities are coming together in this show. Um, black people <coughs> are um, varied in range, so I think this quote is speaking to that. She's saying she's a part of two different groups at the same time. This quote says, Now we're seeing everybody love the East Side, especially white people. For us, the East Side has always been cool. It's been dope. That's all we knew. I feel a sense of ownership and responsibility to make sure the East Side doesn't lose its culture. It doesn't lose its blackness. Because they come in. They already over there. It's important that when they do come, we hold them accountable. This is from an interview that I did with a guy who was talking about growing up on the East Side and not wanting to lose the culture of the East Side, buying property on the East Side, making sure that he does his part to keep black people on the East Side. Because that's absolutely true. Gentrification is happening, and when that happens, there something happens when you lose um, the culture and the blackness. It, it gets dispersed. It gets sent out because people are leaving, people are pushed away. Um, and when you grew up in a place and you love that place, you have a sense of ownership over it, and you want to keep it. Um, yeah, that's it. I have a question for you. Um, just thinking in terms of like the subjects. I noticed a lot of the paintings, the subjects are kind of isolated in background and there's not really a lot going on behind them, but in these larger scale works there's kind of sort of, there's a historical anchor to them. And I just wondered what you thought about the, the background as far as um, placing them in you know, just a white space or other yeah, that's a good question. I think that also kind of goes to Jennifer's question. Um, if you guys didn't hear, this person asked, like, the backgrounds of the paintings are sort of white and just very plain, and um, whereas the drawings sort of have something happening as far as being put with these circle images and the thoughts in the backgrounds. Um, that's a good question. When I was doing the paintings for the show, one thing that I did have in mind was I was thinking of placing the paintings on top of historical photos. Um, 
it's similar to this, so have a wee pasted background and just put the painting right on top of it. I didn't end up doing that just because it just didn't work out that way. It ended up working out the way that it is now. Um, but even before that, a lot of my paintings are like that, just a sort of plain white background. And you'll also see how some of it's just unfinished. The same with the painting of my mom in the front. Um, you'll see this painting over here. You see the lines, you see the drawing a little bit. There's this unfinished aesthetic to it. Um, I like that because I like you being able to see the hand, being able to see the craft of the painting. Um, and it does also, I think, in the same way that Jim Crow say, create this sort of ephemeral look. It's like this, it's sort of just, it appears, you know what I mean? I don't want my paintings to appear too worked, too, um, too complete, too full. I like the idea of the person just sort of sitting there on the wall in this space. And I think having that white background kind of puts me more into the space. Um, the drawings as well. I mean, I don't always place the historical photos with the drawings. I did for the show for obvious reasons, and I think it worked out really beautifully in my opinion. Um, but usually, you'll see the same thing, the unfinished of the drawing. You'll see, you know, it's not completely shaded in. Um, there's something about focusing on the face and sort of having it just sort of appear in this way um, in the background that I started doing both the drawing and the painting. Yeah. Um, so over here in this corner, we have a family photo. Um, I've always loved black and white photos of black people and black life. Um, I usually go to my grandma's house and just sort of like take some of the pictures. Um, just because I love them, and I got this from my grandma's house. So this is some family members. I don't know who it is actually, to be honest. Um, I have to ask my mom when she shows up. Um, but I just thought that this was a really beautiful photograph and I wanted to place a really large scale on the wall. Um, here we have Alana. Uh, Alana is a friend of mine. Um, this quote is by Alana. Um, and this quote is talking about, you know, women, black women that she admires, that um, she looked up to um, from well-known folks and her family members. Um, all these amazing black women who do have done these amazing things. Um, this quote, I think, is doing the same when we're taking, you know, this person, um, but she is bringing in the historical references, so simply by saying who she's been inspired by. Um, now, when I was thinking of where to place another image on this wall, because the two, just her and the quote, weren't really working by themselves, um, I could have found a photo of, you know, uh, Claire Luber, you know, or, or any of these people that we know, but I wanted to find a photo of a woman who we don't know. You know, I, I think the show is, again, trying to talk about and amplify regular black people. Um, this is a photo that I got from my grandma's house. I asked my grandma, who is this woman? She's like, this is a woman who lived um, down the street from me. Um, she died, uh, but yeah, she's a woman who lived down the street from me. Um, and what is it like to celebrate the black people and the black women particularly that we don't read about, that we don't see on TV, that aren't famous, that aren't celebrated. Um, who are they? What are their lives like? And why aren't their lives worth celebrating in the same way as the people who've done these amazing things? I think that just waking up and surviving, who knows what this woman went through in her life. I think that just surviving her life is a feat in itself that is worth being celebrated. So even though Atlanta mentions these people that a lot of us know, I wanted to, when I was thinking about a photo to put up here, I wanted to put up a woman that could be anybody, it could be anybody's grandma, could be anybody's aunt, anybody's cousin, who also is an amazing woman who probably did amazing things. Um, so there's that. Here we have a painting. Um, <clears throat> this is Lance and Chris. Um, I really like this oil painting. Um, it says, it's hard to find spaces that are welcoming and accepting in my basic existence. I've spent years learning how to self-validate, and that, along with the support of close friends and family, has been my saving grace. Um, I think that that quote could be applied to so many people, um, especially him, as a black gay man in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma City, um, <clears throat> having to self-validate and find support within close friend, friends and family. That's sort of a thing that you'll see 
also, I think as we move into the living room space as well, um, is the sense of when you walk outside, how you're faced with all of these different oppressions, racism, homophobia, um, sexism, um, all these different things hit you in these different ways all the time, especially in a place like Oklahoma. Um, and so how do you deal with that? How do you navigate that? That's a question that I ask a bunch of people. How do you navigate these white spaces where you're experiencing racism? How do you navigate these spaces where you're experiencing homophobia? Um, <clears throat> um, what is that like for you? Um, and this is what Lance had to say about that. Um, and so I, I didn't do a portrait of just him. I wanted him and his husband together. I mean, I think that they're a beautiful couple for one, but also I wanted to um, represent black love in a way that is different from what we think about when we think about black love. I think black love is normally um, portrayed as this very heteronormative thing. Um, but what else is black love? Black love can be all these different things and seen in all these different ways. And so I wanted to, to show that and represent that here. Um, <clears throat> behind you, we have um, a video, an interview. Um, <clears throat> like I said, for most of the folks that I portrayed here, we did an interview with them. So this is the interview with Judge Alicia Tennant. Um, it's kind of down now, but you can hear it. She talks a lot about. It was a very long interview. She had a lot to say. <laughs> um, she's extremely well spoken. She's it's worth sitting down. For. It's worth sitting down and listening to. Absolutely. Um, she talks a lot about the lack of um, black folks, black women in particular, um, when it comes to um, um, being lawyers and judges, um, not for the lack of uh, you know talent, but for the lack of simply you know having the opportunity there. Um, she talks a lot about. Um, um, black folks being criminalized, um, the importance of having black and brown people in places of authority to say, to see these other black people that are in the community not as criminals, but to see them as family members, to see them as people that you recognize, and why that's important. Um, I think that's such a good point. It can be applied to so many different areas of our life and our culture. Um, from everywhere, art, media, right? It's not just enough to just sort of have and see black and brown people. Um, they need to be in places of position in order to to sort of de-escalate the criminalization of um, black folks. Um, so it's a great interview. If you want to come back and listen to it, I would, I would do that. Um, this is a quote from that interview. It says, if you don't have diversity on the bench, there's a problem with seeing people as others. When you have no one else to say, wait a minute, we're not others, that's my brother, my cousin, I know his mom, she's a good person, he's a good kid, he just made a mistake. There are pivotal moments in people's lives when mercy turns someone into a taxpayer instead of a tax burden. Um, I chose that quote to put on the wall because I was particularly liking the fact that she used the word others, um, which is a word that I've used in my work before. I think that um, black and brown people and other people are looked at as others, as someone who is different from the norm. So this is what the norm is, and this is somebody who is other than that. Um, the point is to break that down, to say we are not others, because by calling us others is saying that whiteness and white people, that's the norm, and anything that's not that is something different. It needs to have this qualification. You need to be a black person instead of just a person, right? Um, so I thought that that was really uh, great that she used that word, and um, she talks more about that in the video. So we can move over this way. I'll just briefly say we're, gonna, um, we're passing by the learning gallery, so there's a lot of uh, activities, books to read, quotes to think about um, that um, might help you give more depth to or might help you process some of the um, artwork in the exhibition. So for people at home or for you guys that are here now, uh, you might want to check this out later on on your own. So this area, um, <clears throat> I really like this area a lot. Uh, over here we have this photo collage that I put together. Um, the quote says, growing up, I loved it. I remember walking from my grandma's house to the store to get pickles and pajama riches in them. I never did that because that's disgusting. <laughs> Um, walked to 8th Street to my cousin's house and played football. My mom had shot to the 3rd Street where she did hair. My grandma <clears throat> off of 4th Street where she did hair. That's part of not just my history, but all of our history. Um, 
And I love that because that's so true. Even though I did not put Jolly Ranchers in my pickles, I do understand that sentiment and it did feel like home. As I was talking to him, this is a quote from JB. Um, as I was talking to him, it did make me miss the East Side just as much um, as he did. Because everything that he was talking about, we're around the same age, it felt like, yeah. That, that's, that was my life and my childhood too. Um, so I put that on top of these photos because of the, that's just not my history, but all of our history. Um, these photos are, a lot of them are my personal photos that I took. Um, most of them are. So but we have family members, um, friends, we have, you know, um, some historical photos. We have things that I think just, I love, sort of like a different, Aspects of blackness, you know, you have the Dudley's hair magazine that you see at the salon when you get your hair done. Um, my best friend's husband, this is a, from his photo from Club Lexus, I take pictures in the club. Um, that's right next to somebody's barbershop, which is right next to this historical photo um, of Black people in church, which is right next to, um, you know, my family out in Spencer riding a horse out in the country. So all of these different sort of aspects of blackness and different types blackness. Again, mostly coming from my lens and my viewpoint, obviously, um, but put right next to each other to sort of create this lovely, huge, wide-ranging experience of black folks. Um, and this here is just sort of a, a continuation of that. This is a family photo again. That's my aunt, little my grandma, sister, um, and her husband. Um, behind us, we start to move into this living room space. Um, most of the interviews that we did, that we recorded, um, were done in people's homes. Um, so when we wanted to put together the interview video, we thought it would make sense to create that home space again. Um, so we created a living room. Um, and moving into that living room, I did this painting of my aunt um, in my grandmother's bedroom at my grandmother's house. Um, I thought that that was a great introduction into this living room home space that we entered into. Um, again, a big pop of color about this uh, sort of black and white space. I think this area is the most color. You get some color from the photos, you get this painting, and then we move into actual um, physical objects um, in this installation space. Um, when you turn to walk into it, it says, navigating racism in white spaces is exhausting. It drains you, leaves you with less energy to enjoy the spaces that do make you feel safe, like home. Um, this is from an interview that I did, and I thought that that was very true. Was, for me, I felt very close to that. Um, it can be very draining, dealing with racism and sexism. Um, in my personal experience, all the time, every single day, um, wanting to go home, wanting to feel safe. And also when I think about the, the home space, knowing that also the home space is not always safe for most people. Um, so that's another point of, of violence and aggression or, or just unsafe space that you can feel. Um, but for this space in particular, we wanted to make this living room feel like a safe space. Um, so you come into the living room area. Um, frames, more family photos on the wall. Um, these are my personal family photos. Um, so these, I'm bringing my own artifacts, my own um, images to install into the space. Um, that's my mom, that's me, my grandma. Um, and then you turn around and you're able to, um, you're able to uh, be in the space, sit down and watch the videos that show up on the screen. Um, I sort of want this installation space to be sort of an evolving space um, because it's more of a home space and there's more things that you can add to it. Um, over time, I'd like to add more artifacts, add more things into it, more furniture, just make it feel more like a home space. Um, um, I also have the idea to invite people to add things into the space. If there's something from your home from your, um, that you would like to bring into the space and add to it, I think that'd be great. So right now, it's just sort of your basic space, but over the time of the exhibition, it will evolve to include more things. Um, and so these are the videos. That's Kelly that you saw up there. Um, and you can sit and listen to what people have to say. Um, that back wallpaper is from a photo that I took of my grandmother's house. Um, wanted to feel like the monitor was on the wall, like it was a TV and someone's actual home. Um, then as you're leaving, there's this quote that just sort of like pops up at you. It's not really 
sort of there. I put this, I placed this here, always being stared at, always being watched. Um, that came from, I pulled that from an interview with someone that I had, I think it was Ariana who said that. Um, and that's something that I feel close to, and I think a lot of black and brown folks feel close to as well, is that when you're walking around, you just always feel like people are looking at you or watching you or utilizing you in some way, thinking that you're going to do something. And I place it here because you're not expecting that to be there. It just sort of pops about you. And I think that's the feeling that you get when that happens to you. You're not expecting to be watched or followed. You just sort of, oh, there's that. Oh, yeah, racism is there. Oh, yeah, I can't actually see that. Um, so that's why I place that right here. There's a video in the Central Gallery that I think would be great for you guys to check out because it's really amazing.